Hello everyone, this time we will make a custom date time picker. As most of you know, this is a native Windows control and it does not have many appearance customization options, limiting ourselves to using only one style and design. That is why today I will teach you to break those limits. Well let's start with the tutorial. We will first add a calendar icon to the project, with a transparent background. For this case I have these icons in two presentations, white and a dark, 16 pixels in size. To add it we go to the properties of the project. We select the resources tab. And drag the icons. This way, if this is the first time you are adding any media to the project, the resource folder will be created. Now we will add a new class for the custom date picker. As usual, we import the Windows Forms library to use the conventional Windows controls, and we also import the drawing library. Optionally we convert to public class. To make a custom date picker, we can inherit from a user control to add other controls and have better control over appearance. However, a user control is much heavier and some essential properties and events need to be re-implemented. Therefore, I recommend using a user control as a last option. Or, to create non-existent controls in Windows. And in case the control exists or has properties and events similar to your needs, it is better to simply inherit the control and manipulate the paint method. In this case, we will inherit from the date time picker control. In addition, in this way the control is much lighter and cheaper in execution time, and also easy and fast to customize. Well, let's continue. We will first declare fields for the appearance and assign their default values. For example, the background color, text color, border color, and border size. We will also need other fields to store other values of the control. Like, a field to get or set if the calendar is dropped down or not. A field to store the date picker icon. As a default, we choose an icon previously added in the project resources. A rectangle to store the icon button area. A constant integer to set the width of the calendar icon and a constant integer to set the width of the arrow icon. These last two fields will help us to determine the width of the drop-down icon. As many realized, when the width of the control is greater, the button with the usual calendar icon is displayed and its width is an average of 34 pixels. But when the width of the control is adjusted and less than the content, it is changed to a smaller and simpler drop-down icon button. Its width is an average of 17 pixels. Later you will realize the importance of these last three fields. Well, continuing. Now we will create the properties of these fields and thus be able to change the appearance of the control from the properties box. When the background color of the date picker is set, we will also set the icon, either dark or light, depending on the tone of the background color. To do this, we must obtain the brightness of the color. If you don't know what a method does, we can go to the definition and read the comments. In this case, if the return value is 0, it represents a black hue, and if the return value is 1, it represents a white hue or saturation. So, we can add the condition of if the color brightness is greater than or equal to 0.8, the calendar icon of the date picker will be dark. Otherwise, the calendar icon in the date picker will be white. Finally we called the invalidate method to redraw the control and thus update the appearance. In the same way for the other properties.
Now in the constructor, we specify the style and behavior of the control. In this case, the control will be painted by the user and not by the operating system. This line is very important, since only then is it possible to override the paint event in native Windows controls. We set the minimum size of the control, in this way we can change the height of the date picker. You can also do it later from the properties box. I'll also increase the font size. You can keep initializing other properties. OK, now we will override the following methods. The drop down event occurs when the calendar is displayed. And here we simply change the state of the drop down field to true. Now we will override the close up event. It happens when the drop-down calendar is closed. And we change the state of the drop-down field to false. If you don't like overriding event methods, you can subscribe the events from the constructor. I do it this way to do it faster. In the key press event, we indicate that if the event was handled, this to avoid changing the value of the date picker with the numeric keys. Now the most important part, we override the paint event method. Here we declare all the objects necessary to draw the control. We first create the graphics object for the control. We create a pen object to draw the border of the control, with the specified border color and size. A solid brush object to draw the background color of the control. Another solid brush object to draw the background color of the icon when the calendar is dropped down, in this case a transparent dark color to darken the icon area. The alpha component allows you to determine the transparency of the color, which can be used to superimpose colors. OK, let's create another solid brush object to draw the date picker text. Finally we create an object for the text format. Again, I emphasize that the using statement allows objects to be disposed of correctly when they have done their job. Continuing, we create a floating value rectangle object for the area of the control. Another floating value rectangle for the icon area. You may wonder why I don't use the using statement on these objects, the reason is because the rectangle F structure does not implement the iDisposable interface, so there is no point in using the using statement. Well, we set the border pen alignment to inset, and the line alignment of the text format in centered. Once all of the above is done, we will begin to draw the control. First we draw the surface of the control, for this we fill a rectangle with a skin brush in the dimensions of the control area, previously defined. Now we draw a string, with the text, font, text brush and format in the control area. We concatenate some white space to the text to apply a margin to the right side of the control. Now we will draw the highlight or darkening of the icon area when the calendar is displayed. To do this, we verify the pop-up calendar is displayed. In the same way to draw the border. We check if the border size value is greater than zero. For some reason this method does not accept rectangle F as a parameter, apparently Microsoft forgot to overload the method. Then it only remains to send location and size manually, or they can send in an array. 
Here I forgot to send the pen object to draw the border. Okay. Finally we draw the date picker icon, centered and over the icon area. To do this, on the x-axis, we subtract the width of the control minus the width of the icon and 9. On the y-axis, we subtract the height of the control minus the height of the icon divided by 2 to center. Here I use the width of the control's usual icon, and it should be the width of the image defined in the calendar icon field. The icon image is different in width and height than the icon area of the date picker. However, I recommend using an image that is 16 pixels in size. Alright, that's it for now. To generate the control and test it, we must build the project. Works correctly. I will add other date pickers to change their created appearance properties. As you can see, if the background color is light, the icon will be dark. We can still use any property and event of the traditional date time picker control, that's the advantage of extended controls. Great, it works properly. However, it is not possible to tell if the pointer is over the drop-down icon, as I mentioned at the beginning. The size of the date-time picker icon button varies depending on the width of the control. To solve the problem, we can highlight the area or change the cursor. To do this, we will add a few lines of code. First we will create a private method to get the width of the icon button. we get the width of the text. If the width of the text is less than the width of the control, then the width of the icon button is equal to the width of the calendar icon field. Otherwise, the size of the icon area is equal to the width of the arrow icon field. Remember that these are the average values of the date time picker icon, and the size of the icon button area still needs to be set. To do this, we override the handle created event. We get the width of the icon button, and it is reset the size of the icon button area. It should be mentioned that this event is the closest to the load event of the form. Finally we override a mouse move event. If the icon button area contains the mouse pointer, Change the cursor by hand, otherwise the cursor will have the default cursor. If you want you can also highlight the area. Well, it works properly. And that's it. However, some things still need to be optimized. For example, it does not have support to change the time, with a little more work you can add this functionality or simply create another time selector control, and if you see any problems, you can adjust the values or add it. Goodbye and until the next video.